Welcome to Dr. Dorian's House of Killers, where we take a look at all your favorite killers and see how they could be implemented into Dead by Daylight. Today, we are taking a look at the Mimic Lord. Roll the intro. The Mimic Lord is of no particular franchise. It could be from D&D. It could also be from some horror movie that I don't know. I feel like there are a few where objects kill and people possess objects, but we shall continue. We will start off with the speed, 115%, 4.6 meters per second. However, there are situations where it's 105%, going up to 110%, which is 4.2 meters up to 4.4 meters per second. His size is medium in general, and the terror radius is big. However, there is a situation where he has none, small and medium terror radius in that um, progression. Map effect. Should you not know, I am of the opinion if there is a map effect that reveals the killer, they should have multiple powers. That's why my builds always have multiple powers that you can choose like a loadout similar to the items that uh, survivors take. And But the map effect is always present no matter which ability the killer takes. So in this case, the map effect is the vials of seeing and concealment. Vials can be picked up at Van Helsing wagons. Consuming a vial grants the following effect for 60 seconds. Vials enable a survivor to detect a possessed object or a true body posing as an object within the range of 24 meters. In addition, the line of sight ability of the entity does not work for the duration as well. Now, the difference between posing and possessing. Posing, true body takes form of an object. Possessing. True body wanders as an AI, pursues survivors, breaks pallets and vaults, but does not do yield damage. However, the player takes control of an object, more or less. He doesn't turn into one, he takes control of one that exists already. Power 1 is Tongue Whip. While posing or possessing, you gain a short-range sneak attack that deals 1 damage. If posing, you revert back to your true body. If possessing, your true body is uh, teleported to the place where you are after a successful sneak attack or a successful attack. Power 2. Grand Vision, which is uh, the line of sight ability more or less. While posing or possessing, you can channel your supernatural perception. Doing so lets you see the direction in which players are looking as long as you can see them. The power depletes over time and recharges when not in use. I would think about 20 seconds or something like that. So you can uh, you get sort of like a, a color indicator of what survivor is looking in which direction. Only survivors that you see, so it's similar to stalking from Myers. You, through a cornfield it wouldn't work. Around corners it doesn't work, etc. Um, Power... Three, gen mimic. Gem, gen mimic. You can change your true body into a gen. Moving in this form is not possible. You also lose your terror radius. This is the only one where moving is not possible because I feel like having a wandering gen would be a little bit... Hmm. Um, power f four, in this case. Uh, palette mimic. Possess or... Um, pose as a pallet. While possessing or posing as a pallet, you can move starting at 105% movement speed, going up to 110% movement speed. This takes 10 seconds from going to 0 to 110% um, more or less, or from 105 to 110%. While standing still, your terror radius is 0. After 2 seconds of moving, your terror radius Terror radius activates and you uh, start building it up. So it is then the same equivalent that we all know. 105% uh, small me uh, terror radius, 110% medium terror radius. Um, now, alternate power 4 is chest mimic, which works the same way as the pallet mimic. Then we have the locker mimic, which is power 5, which also works the same as... Uh, palette or a chest mimic and we have the alternate power five environmental mimic or um which in essence works the same as 
the aforementioned palette chest or locker mimic however there is one uh, well caveat to this um not for uh, possessing an object uh, but for posing as an object as you can in essence any object that's on the map like barrels cars a house not anything too big not but uh things that are more decoration you can um pose or as them or possess them if you pose as something the, what you pose as is randomly well decided so you might get something good you might get something bad perks first perk fake fake exits one, two, three fake exits spawn at the beginning of the map. Only after opening is it clear which one is a real and which one is a fake exit. This also counts for the killer. The killer does not know which one is a real and which one is a fake exit. In essence, you would have to power the gate. It opens and you see a stone wall and you know it's a fake exit. You don't see a stone wall, you know it's a real exit. Power two, a string, a spring loaded chests. One, two, or three chests are booby tra trapped at the beginning of the match. While whenever an attempt is made to open a booby trapped chest, chest, that survivor gets inflicted with one damage state and cries. So a survivor tries to open a booby, tra booby trapped chest, um, gets damaged, stops, starts again, gets damaged again, in the essence gets downed if he doesn't heal himself. Uh, a survivor gets damaged, leaves, other survivor goes there, starts opening it, gets damaged, and so on. If you completely open it, of course the chest is open, then no more uh, trap doesn't work, uh, trigger anymore. Last perk. Vindictive Totem. A successful cleansing adult totem inflicts a exposed status effect for 10, 20, or 30 seconds, and reveals the aura for 3, 4, or 5 seconds. After a successful cleansing. If the cleansed totem is a hex totem, all effects are doubled. So in essence, for example, 30 seconds, exp uh, 60 seconds exposed and 10 seconds aura revealed. How did you like my idea for the Mimic Lord? Do you have any ideas how to improve on him? Other powers? Suggestions for him? Leave them in the comments below. I also stream every Monday and uh, Tuesday and every other Wednesday and Friday on Twitch. Until next time, toodles.